Good morning and welcome to Thursday, March the 14th. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church. And today I'm recording my daily devotion from our narthex behind me, the entrance to our sanctuary. And while it is dark now in these morning hours, there is a plan that's going to be uh, formulated for reopening our doors. And that meeting is coming next Tuesday evening of some of our leaders of Holy Cross and a mailing will follow in uh, next week, Thursday. So everyone will have an opportunity to see uh, how we are going to worship together and when that will begin. And the only thing I can tell you now before the meeting is we will be back in church together soon. So please focus now on this devotion that really sets where we are in the midst of this pandemic that is just changed our lives in ways we could have never, ever guessed. And in a time in our nation and world where we have really understood in a new way what we can control and what we cannot. So the devotion for today is titled, In Control. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, a wonderful look back at the season of Advent and Christmas to set the stage for our devotion. Again, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it, and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The devotion begins. We all like to be in control. At home, at work, in many other situations. At least we like to give the appearance that we are in control. In illness though, our own or that of a family member or friend, in a natural disaster, in a terrifying episode of violence, or in the times we are all living today in the midst of a global pandemic, we soon realized we are not in control. And it seems sometimes, honestly, as if no one is in control and everything seems out of control. We cannot begin to understand all the events going on around us in the way they occur and the decisions that lead to them. And when we are feeling out of control, then oftentimes our minds begin to drift into thoughts that really don't help to support those who have the authority and also the burden of responsibility in making the decisions that affect our lives. So before we continue, let me encourage you, if you have not been making it your daily practice, then pray for all leaders. It is commanded by God in scripture, and it is something we should not just do whenever we get around to it. When circumstances are out of our control, it is time to recognize who is actually in control, who is commanding it all. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, after his resurrection said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus' grip on authority was foretold by the prophet Isaiah centuries before his birth in Bethlehem. This masterful Lord would come among us, not as a powerful, controlling, commanding figure, but as an infant, a little child, a son. And his governing power would increase without any end. His throne and kingdom would last for all eternity. The four names given to this all-powerful Son of God is Wonderful Counselor, whose wisdom rules over all things. He is the mighty God who was there speaking into creation all that existed in the beginning and all that exists today and still rules over it. He is the everlasting Father, as he cares for all the children of his flock. And this child, this son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Prince of Peace. 
He is in control of the overbearing, demanding, and threatening rule of authority and tyranny. He is the Prince of Peace who quieted storms with a few words. He banished illness, blindness, and commanded even death to release its victims. Jesus' control, his authority, his peace came about because he was willing to give up control. He submitted himself to the storm of sin and evil that assaulted and for a brief time overcame his human nature. Jesus, our Prince of Peace, sacrificed himself to pay for your sin and mine, for our desire to wrest any control we could ever have or want from the creator of the world in whom all power resides. In Jesus, God reconciled this out of control world to himself from Colossians 1 verse 20, making peace by the blood of his cross. Jesus in that moment surrendered all control, obedient to his heavenly father to the very point of death. But raised to life on the third day, Jesus was then exalted to the position of absolute authority once again, authority over all. We do need, in trying times like these, to manage many challenging situations, seek protections, and arrange for rescue. Yet however much we long to be in control, especially in out-of-control circumstances, it is Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who is truly in command of the entire situation. He is the wonderful counselor who gives us wisdom and wisdom to our leaders to handle the troubles we face. He is the mighty God who alone can control the storms of fear that we allow to build up within us. He is the everlasting Father who keeps us, his precious children, close and safe to himself. Even when you feel as if everything is out of control, remember, everything is control under the mighty, gentle reign of Jesus Christ, your Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Jesus, you are our Prince of Peace. We pray even more today that you reign in our hearts at all times, especially during challenging anxious, troubling moments like we face in a global pandemic. Forgive us when we turn from you to listen to simply the voices of the world and follow our own desires. Have mercy on us. Grant us peace and trust in you who is in control and has absolute authority. Heavenly Father, we turn to you also in prayer asking that you would continue to grant the wisdom that all of our leaders need. None of them saw this time coming, but gracious God, many of us have not lifted them up in our daily prayers, even as you command us to do in your word. We pray for them today, but by your spirit, may each of us pray for all of them every day, praying for your wisdom for strength, for good counsel that comes from those around them, and for decisions that are for the common good and not for any individual. Bless and keep them until we are able to meet again and begin resuming whatever normal may be, the life that we feel we need to return to as quickly as possible. But bless all those who are affected. We know who they are and all of those circumstances, and we can pray for them each and every day. Bless and keep us, dear Jesus. You are our risen from the dead, living and reigning Good Shepherd. So it is with great joy we end our prayer today with the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in Jesus. And have no fear, flock of God. The lights that are out behind me right now in church will be on again. Pray for our leadership team that meets next week to plan that return from the exile of this pandemic. And while those lights are off behind me, may the light of Christ shine brightly in you. And to all you know, to all you see, all that you talk to, the light of Jesus, the light of faith, the light of the world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.